more powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. Oh, uh, <clears throat> I guess that would be me. My name is Steven. There it is. I apologize for that, but I think you'll find this a bit more interesting. Welcome to another episode of Just Another Fanboy, the podcast built on peanut butter and old, stale-smelling issues of comic books. I'm your host, my name is Steven, and before we really dig into today's episode, I want to tell you what I did this weekend. See, if you listened to the previous episode, JAF Classics number 9, The Wayward Mime, I opened the episode lamenting over the fact that message boards aren't really the thing that they used to be. Now that we have places like Twitter and Facebook and Reddit, most people don't really bother with the whole message board thing. Well, I feel that that's a shame because, frankly, I have never felt closer to my listeners and the comic book podcasting community in general than when we all hung out on a message board called the Comic Forums way, way back in the day. And so this past weekend, I created my own message board and I invite you all to join me over there. The link will be in the show notes, but just in case you can find it at forum.justanotherfanboy.com. It's free and it's fun. And I hope to see you all there by the end of the week. All right, that's your assignment to join and start posting by the end of the week. Let's do this, folks. What's old is new again. And you should really be a part of that. Now, on with the show. Today, I continue my trek, my expedition, my journey, my odyssey through what could be argued is one of the longest running, most popular independent comic books of all time. And while there are many counter arguments to that, uh, I'm not here to argue. So let's let's not do that. Let's just pretend that what I'm saying is actual fact. Anyway, I am, of course, talking about ElfQuest. I say, of course, because, well, it's the title of the episode. Today, I'm going to recap and poorly review ElfQuest issue number 13 from Warp Graphics. This was published in June of 1982, and it was written by Richard and Wendy Peeney with art by Wendy Peeney. The issue opens in Sauro's End. You know, that desert village in the desert where... uh where the Wolf Riders had gone to after leaving their home, which had been burned to the ground, and which Cutter and Skywise left in order to find more elves, and then his newly his his new wife, his new life mate, Lita, and their two cubs, Suntop and Ember, along with many of the other Wolf Riders, set off to find them because Suntop needs to give Cutter a warning. Because Sava, the mother of memory, the oldest living elf within this desert village, she is a magic user and she had left her body to keep an eye on Cutter and Skywise and she met something evil that has now trapped her within her own body. She's basically in a coma. And so the other elves of Sorrow's End are basically just looking after her, making sure she is okay and uh, wondering what's going on with Cutter and, and, and Lita and all them. Outside, in the village, Strongbow and Moonshade's son, Dart, he had stayed behind with, with a few others, um, like Woodlock and his wife and, 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 and kids. Well, why, I keep saying, I said wife, but they, they're, they, they're not really married. They don't do real marriages in ElfQuest. They're life mates. That's what they, they call each other. Anyway, Dart is teaching the sun folk how to use a weapon that they call a arrow whip. And it's basically just a stick with a string on the top of it. And they, they put the arrow in the, in, in the string and they, they, they pull the arrow back and the string pulls the, the stick back and bends it like a, like it's, it's almost like half of a bow and it just launches the arrow over the top of the stick. And uh, the sun folk seem to be picking it up rather well. We get to the title of the issue, The Secret of the Wolf Riders, which is not uh, uh, a tease. We actually learn the secret or a secret of the Wolf Riders. So we're in Blue Mountain. Um, 
Dushine, if you remember from the last issue, learned that Winnowill and Tildak are going to kill the Preserver Petal Wing because they there's something about if the 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 Lord of Blue Mountain, Lord Vol, if he learns that the Preserver still exists, that apparently is going to be a bad thing. And Dushine wants to stop that from happening. Lord Vol, in the meantime, has confronted Winnowill. She, uh, he, he, apparently he found out that she was kind of looking in on the Wolf Riders as they were having their council to determine whether or not they were going to stay. And she, of course, is a big fat liar and tells Lord Vol that she only wished to offer the Wolf Riders her friendship and to be near their children, which is a load of crap because she is an evil, evil elf, evil elf, evil elf, however you want to say it anyway strongbow and moonshade they had decided in the last issue they were not going to stay in blue mountain while the rest of them they are staying because ultimately uh lord vol had told them that they the the elves there within blue mountain are the high ones which cutter that was one of the things uh that cutter and skywise were trying to find were um information about the high ones now the high ones are the elves that first came to the land of or the world of two moons and uh i'm going to give a a brief recap on that basically the these elves are aliens they come from uh outer space and they were flying in a ship that using their magic they could change the shape of and they were uh crash landing on this world of two moons and they changed the shape of the ship into a palace to resemble uh, other structures on the world of two moons as they were crashing. But then something happened and they go through some kind of weird time warp and they end up on the on the world of two moons uh, way earlier than when they arrived. When they arrived, they were in kind of a medieval society. And when they crashed, it was more of a prehistoric society. But the the ship still looked like a palace, and then the, so they often refer to it as the Palace of the High Ones. So one of the reasons they want to stay in Blue Mountain is to try to learn more, not only about the High Ones, but where they as elves uh, have come from. You know, they want to learn more of their history because they're they're none of them the Sun Folk, the Wolf Riders. They're not quite up on their history, other than knowing about the High Ones. But they also want to stay. Because Dushine and Tildak have recognition with each other. And if you remember, recognition is the 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 genetic uh, thing that is built into all elves so that they will reproduce. It's to to keep their species going. And it's a, it's basically just a, you know, and, and two basically two elves are meant to reproduce together. And the recognition is what allows them to, I guess, recognize this is the person I am going to produce children with. And it's kind of a, it's, it's built within their very souls and their, their, their psyche and their, their, their physical being. So they can't really fight it too much. They don't, they don't, uh, they, they can be with whoever they want to be, but when they find the one that they are, uh, recognized to, I guess, copulate with, then they really have no other choice. And that's that's really the only purpose behind it. Now, some of these elves, when they become recognized, they decide to stay with each other for the rest of their lives, just like Cutter and Lita. And other elves are just like, well, I guess we're going to do this thing. We're going to create a child and then we're going to go our separate ways. And that's kind of what Dushine and Tildak are doing, because Dushine has what she refers to as a love mate, which is Scouter. He is the son of one eye and uh Clearbrook, I think her name is. Um, I'm actually remembering most of these names. That's pretty amazing for me. Anyway, Dushine learns that Winnow Will and Tildak are going to kill Petalwing. She knows where Petalwing is. Petalwing is in a stone cage in Tildak's chambers. So she goes to Tildak's chambers to to free Petalwing. Winnow Will and Tildak learn. They realize that that's what she is, has gone off to do. So Tildak goes to, to stop her. But she picks up a, uh, a gleaming metal statue, which is of Tildak before he was changed. Uh, again, I'm going to I have to backpedal here just just in case y'all forget. Tildak is one of these elves from the Blue Mountain. 
He is one of the they uh, they have these gliders, these these elves that can fly. Well, he wants to he wanted to fly under his own power, not through magic. He wanted to fly like the birds. And so he convinced Winnowill to shape his body. They have some of these elves can shape wood and plants. Some of them can shape rocks. She apparently can shape flesh. And so she uh, turns his his arms into wings uh, puts a big fin on his head to help him steer and all that stuff. So he looks he looks like a mutant. He's like a mutant elf, and he doesn't look like the other elves, uh, but it's 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 who he wants to be. Well, Dushine manages to free Petalwing. Tildak is very upset with this, and so he slaps her across the face in anger, and she hits the ground, and she looks up at him, and as their eyes meet, he... Uh, the the recognition really just kind of goes into overdrive. And when two elves recognize each other, they have uh, most, some elves, or at least uh, at least the wolf riders, they have soul names. And they, Dushine is is her her given name, but she has a soul name, which is a name that was, that is in, imprinted basically, I guess, on her DNA and her soul and her psyche. And that name is Lree, and that's L-R-E-E, Lree. And as soon as their eyes meet, that name enters in into Tildak's head and he realizes that, you know, they are bound together to procreate and he uh, he does not want to hurt her himself or see any harm come to her. Uh, and so that's when Winnow Will comes in and she tells Tildak that the girl must be punished. And Tildak had been saying, you know, I can't hurt you. And Winnowill says, I can. She must be punished. And Tildak's like, no. And instead of saying, you know, I don't want you to do that because I actually care for her deep in my soul, he he tells her that it would be a waste of time. They need to get out there and they need to find that preserver before Lord Vol does. And Winnowill agrees. But Winnowill, as a as a last, you know, like a last minute, last thought type of thing, because she still wants to hurt Dushine. She says her her soul name, Lri, which with the Wolf Riders and their soul names, the the only people that should know it are people who who deeply, deeply care for them, such as someone who is recognized. And then, for example, Cutter, his soul name is Tam. And Lita, of course, knows it because they're soulmates and they were recognized. And but Skywise is his He's his best good friend. And so he knows his his uh, soul name as well. I think it's called soul name. I can't quite remember. Anyway, she sends both Dushine and Tildak off to find Petalwing. Um, Dushine basically at first says, no, I'm not going to help you kill Petalwing. And that's when she uses, when Will uses her soul name uh, to punish her and to show her that she can hurt her to, uh, you know, to, pun- to punish her and to show her that she can hurt her if need be. And tells them both to go find Petalwing, and she knows she she tells them that they both know how she will reward them both if they fail. Then we go to a big feast. All the elves are sitting around a big table in Blue Mountain, and they're they're having a feast. They're eating fish. And um, Ember at one point, Cutter and and Lita's uh, daughter, she is she's kind of staring up at Lord Vol, and she's giving him the stink eye, and. She basically says, she she just straight out asks him, are you a high one? Winnowell says you are, but I don't like her. And Lita, right away, she is ready to jump in to, to quiet Ember for being rude. But Cutter's like, no, let her ask. And so Lord Vol tells the story. He is technically, I guess you would say he's a high one. He was not aboard the ship. He was born on uh, the world of two moons, but he's one of the firstborn of the high ones. And so he's always kind of been in charge of the other uh, elves that were born of the high ones. And they're, they're all basically the, the first generation. Many, many of the elves in the blue mountain are the first generation of elves born on the world of two moons. And he had taken them to live within the blue mountain because he didn't think that they would be safe living outside, basically. And so then Lord Vol asks Cutter, you know, what about you and your tribe? I don't know your origins. Tell me, tell me what, uh, how, how, you know, the, the history of your tribe. And Cutter is about to, and Lita spills dream berry juice or wine or whatever it is on him. And Pike, who is drunk, reaches over to 
uh, hand him a towel to to clean the 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 dream berry juice off of his sleeve. Knocks over a, a candle, which ignites the 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 alcoholic uh, beverage, and uh, Cutter's shirt catches fire, and Pike and Skywise and Lita jump on him to 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 pull the shirt off and and douse the flame. And we learn basically that Lita was ultimately trying to stop Cutter from revealing too much about the Wolf Riders. There's apparently something, and we'll learn this a little bit later in the issue, there's something about their history that she does not want others to know. And there's actually something about their history that she uh, she knows, but the other Wolf Riders may not. Uh, a little later, we meet up with Skywise and Pike and uh, Aurori. I always say her name wrong. No, Aurori, that's her name. She's one of the Chosen Eight, one of the gliders of Blue Mountain. And they're all just kind of roaming the the freaking Blue Mountain. Oh, Scouter's with them. And they come across a guy that they call Egg. And Egg is, um, it's, it's really hard to describe what Egg does. He is a rock shaper. He is kind of like, if you remember Door from one of the previous issues, Door's only existence is to sit above a, a stone archway and use his rock shape powers to open you know, to shape the rock within the archway to basically open and close the door. That's all he does. Egg uh, shapes a giant egg. And there's a, it's like a very um, lattice work almost. Uh, I mean, not square, but just, there's just these designs, these, these web-like uh, designs that egg shapes. And within the outer layer, there is a, there are more layers with more designs. And, Aurori basically tells them that that egg is is, uh, w- you know, within all these layers are basically the secrets of existence. And while you can't just stand there and see them, you have to lose yourself entirely in contemplation. And then all the secrets of existence are hidden in the symbols. And since life is endless for elves, eggs work is also endless, ever growing, spinning. Each newly formed symbol changes the meaning of all the others. Well. Skywise asks basically, you know, how or no, Pike asks, how how does he eat? How does egg eat? And when and Aurori tells him that Winnowill serves him a potion now and again. It's the same drink she gives to Brace and Dor. There's another elf who's a rock shaper whose just entire existence is bracing a bit of ceiling so that it doesn't collapse. And Skywise basically tells Aurori, egg and brace and door. They have become what they do. They're not living, and it's wrong. And we see after uh, she tells Skywise and Pike that or that that Winnowill basically gives these three elves this drink that sustains them. Pike, who's still kind of drunk, and he's holding a, a, a thing of of his wine. He gets a little smile on his face, and suddenly the egg starts acting all weird, and it gets blobby rock is coming out of it and it's rocking back and forth. And we learned that uh Pike gave a little bit of the wine to uh egg and now egg is super drunk and is messing up the 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 big egg. Winnow Will comes in and Aurori uh basically says that she's gonna be furious about what's happening to egg and so they all run away. The three of them, Aurori apparently goes somewhere else. The three of them, Skywise, Pike and Scouter, encounter Dushine who is crying and uh, she tells them all about Petal Wing and what's going to happen to Petal Wing. And Skywise says, uh, I know just, you know, basically that they, they have to do something to, to stop it. And he knows the best person to do it. And apparently he, he tells Lita what's going on. And Lita comes into the chamber where Winnowill is healing Egg, basically getting all the, the drunkenness out of him. And they have a conversation. Winnowill's really upset about what happened to Egg. And uh, they they kind of start arguing. And um, Winnowill, well, Lita tells Winnowill what she knows that, that you know, or that she knows that Winnowill and Tildak were going to kill or want to kill Petalwing. Um, in the meantime, Cutter comes upon them basically in the doorway and he stops to spy on them and listen to what they're talking about. And Lita is basically telling Winnow Will that, look, if something like Petalwing uh, is such a threat to you, 
then your position among the, the, the gliders here in Blue Mountain is not as secure as you pretend it to be. And Winnowill really wants them to leave. She wants the wolf riders to leave. And Lita tells her, no, we're not leaving. We're staying. And uh, once Lord Vol sees Petal Wing, you will go back into the shadows where you belong. And uh, Winnowill tells her that, look, she's got another, another uh, weapon that she can use against the wolf riders. And um, she knows the wolf rider secret, just like Lita knows the wolf rider secret, because when, well, basically they're both healers. Winnowill is just taking it to a different degree. She uses the power to heal as well as shape flesh, as well as uh, cause pain. And she tells um, Lita that when she touched Strongbow, she learned just as Lita learned the wolf rider secret when Lita healed Red Lance earlier in the series. And the secret is that there is a taint to the Wolf Rider's blood. And as Cutter is listening, she explains that because of this taint in their blood, the the Wolf Riders are not immortal like the rest of the elves. And uh if Lita doesn't convince the rest of the Wolf Riders to 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 leave Blue Mountain, she's going to tell them all what that secret is. Well, that's when Cutter step, walks in and he's like, hey, I've been listening to you guys the whole time. I know I have the blood of wolves in my veins. Uh, I scent and I stalk and I hear like a wolf. And Winnow Will says, well, then you know that someday you're going to grow old and die like a wolf. And Cutter's like, nothing's for certain, but you know what? You no longer have this to hold over our heads. So uh, yeah, we're staying. And then Winnow Will basically gives a veiled threat uh, against his children. She's like, think about your children. And Cutter gets angry and he draws a sword and he jumps on her and he puts his sword to her throat. And so she attacks him mentally and they're both just struggling there on the ground. Uh, she's just mentally causing him a lot of pain and he's holding the sword to her throat, but he does not budge because he has the, the blood of the wolves in him. And like a wolf, he will not back down. And then that's when we learn the full story of the secret of the Wolf Riders. So I'm going to tell it to you. So when the High Ones, when they crashed on on the World of Two Moons, one of them wa- was an elf named uh, Tamane. And she, uh, she was a High One, one of the first comers. And her magic uh, allowed her to tap into the forces that were native to the world of the two moons, the, the two mooned planet. And she is a, she was a shapeshifter. So she could, she could change her shape into trees and, and all kinds of stuff. And she used that to learn the secrets of this new world. And eventually they're, they're all like her and, and another, and a small group of elves with her after they all escaped from the, from, from the crashed palace because they were, they were driven out by humans who tried to kill them. Uh, basically cavemen who were like, ooh, bad, evil demon spirits. And they tried to kill him and the elves ran away. And so she's with a small group and they're in the mountains and it's very cold and freezing and snowy. And she uh, she learns about the existence of wolves and how they can hunt. And so she takes the shape of a wolf and she goes out with this pack of wolves and she hunts and brings back food for the other elves. But eventually she she continues to stay in the shape of a wolf and comes to like it. And she finds a mate among the wolf pack and they have a cub that is half wolf, half elf. And Tamane brings the cub back to the, the elves because she knows what little is left of her uh, elven side knows that this, uh, her cub has to be raised by the elves and they end up naming this boy uh, to mourn yellow eyes. And he becomes the leader of their group because he is he can hunt like a wolf and he is basically can be very savage and ferocious and powerful. And uh, he ends up mating with with a lot of these other elves and not just his his uh, his life mate that he is recognized with, but other elves. And Cutter is a direct uh, descendant. I think it's 10 generations. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Yeah. 10 chiefs. I guess that's what they call say that he carries the blood of 10 chiefs. He is, uh, the 11th generation basically since to mourn. And, uh, so him by this point, by the, you know, him and all the other wolf riders 
they have, you know, after Tamain uh, was mixing it up with a, with the wolf, they are, they have wolf, wolf and wolf blood in them. And because of that, they may never, uh, they may grow old and die instead of being immortal like the other elves. Now, it's not something that any of the wolf riders ever thought because they live a, a life of, of violence and most of them die uh, before, you know, their time anyway in, in, in a violent way, fighting with humans and whatnot. And uh, as all this comes to light and it's shared with Cutter mentally, he has gone completely savage and he's about to kill her when Lita intervenes and she tells him to remember the Bridge of Destiny when he had that competition with Rayak and how he saved Rayak's life. And she wants him to remember why he did that. And he remembers that no elf must die, even if he is my enemy. And so he pulls the sword away. And Winnowill, of course, being who she is, she's like, you just saved his life. And Lita's like, whatever, B, I saved your life. Don't be stepping up like this, acting like you are Miss Thang, because he was going to kill you. And I stopped it. And so you should be thanking me. And that's when Petal Wing comes flying in and she covers Winnowill with uh, her webbing. And Tildak comes in chasing after Petal Wing, but Petal Wing escapes. And uh, Winnowill goes away, leaving Cutter and Lita in the in the egg chamber. And um, she asks Cutter, you know, can you forgive me for for keeping this secret from you? And He's like, of course I can forgive you. I understand why why you kept it hidden. And frankly, we're going to keep it our secret for now. And, you know, he says, Bear Claw, which is his father, always said that a wolf rider's life is short and I've never known anything different. And Lita tells him that her father is wrong. All of them, all of the wolf riders can live long lives like all the other elves, but they mustn't let Winnowill drive them from the mountain because it's only here that they can that they can learn about their culture and learn about the elves and then the issue ends with Winnowill entering her chambers where her she has like humans who uh she's taken from the the village at the foot of the mountain that that take care of her there she basically uses them as slaves and she does not look happy and uh that's how the issue ends so a lot there was a lot happening in this issue there was i mean we went from the 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 Sun Village to the Blue Mountain and uh just a, a lot happened. We we learned about why um you know that the 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 wolf riders have the blood of wolves in their veins, that they are uh many generations removed, but they are part wolf in to to an extent. And that because of that they may not grow to be uh you know as old as somebody like Lord Vol and, and be because Lord Vol and Sava and Winnowell and these these elves in the Blue Mountain, the older an elf gets, the taller they get. In fact, Lita, who is older than Cutter, she's a little bit taller than him. And eventually, when when an, when an elf is is ancient, I guess you could say they're tall like humans. They're tall and slender, uh, but they start out life um, the like the size of human children, basically. And and uh, it's. The theory at this point is be, we don't know uh, how the life of a wolf rider will will end up because there has never been a wolf rider that has lived long enough to, uh, I guess, test that theory out. But when we see images of Timor and Yellow Eyes, he's tall like the other high ones. So I don't know. I don't, we'll, we'll find out maybe. I don't know if they ever actually address that within this, the original quest, the first 20 issues, but it's. It is something to think about. Again, this is such a fun book. There is so much going on. Every issue that goes by, the last couple issues didn't quite do it, but this one really helped uh, broaden the world a little bit more now that we know a little bit of the history of the the the, the elves from the Blue Mountain and the Wolf Riders, how, how they became bonded with their, their wolves. Because Lord Vol at one point says to Cutter that, you know, they, the, the, the elves in, in the Blue Mountain, they bond with these giant birds that they use for hunting. But he's like, the bond that you have with your wolves seems a bit deeper. There's there's more of a connection there than our connection with these giant birds. And so we know now that that's because they, they carry the blood of the wolves within them. Uh, and we know that they can talk to these wolves mentally to a certain extent, which is which is really quite cool. 
Uh, so what's going to happen next? Winna Will's pissed. You know, she's not going to let this kind of stuff go by without, you know, addressing it. She's she's going to have an answer. She's going to answer to this humiliation that that has has come upon her uh, with the, the preserver pedal wing covering her and webbing and uh, cut her, almost killing her. And she does not want these wolf riders in the mountain. We don't quite know why yet, but uh, I guess we'll find out at some point. Uh, again, beautiful. It's a beautiful looking book. Uh, it's just such a deep, epic story. Um, I just don't know why everybody is not reading this book or hasn't read it at some point. It's like, to me, you hear folks talk about people who've been reading comics for a while and they talk about when somebody new comes up and says, Hey, I want to start reading comics. What are some, what are some must reads? And it's always like uh dark Knight returns, Frank Miller, um, Watchmen, Alan Moore, uh, stuff like that. And it's, and, and the one that I don't think really comes up very often is elf quest. And I think of course, uh, a lot of people, when they're asking, what do I read? Do you, if I wanted to get into comics, a lot of times they are talking about superhero books, but you know, if you want to be a, a well-rounded comic book reader, I think elf quest is a book that needs to be in your library. Books like elf quest, uh, teenage mutant Ninja turtles, um, you know, they're not superhero books, but they uh, they helped make what comics, you know, what they are now. And when I when I made that statement up front, uh, which was a bit jokingly about um, ElfQuest be arguably being the longest running, most popular independent comic of all time. That's not necessarily true. However, uh, it is one of the first independent comics created by uh, doing some research on it by relative unknowns in the comic book field. Basically, a lot of the independently produced comic books that were coming out before ElfQuest, which landed in 1978, they were done by professional comic book artists and writers who were on, you know, books that were uh, from the big publishers who wanted to do their own thing and create their own books and, 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 and did so. But ElfQuest, however, is one of the the first that uh, is independently produced um, by, again, relative unknowns, just comic book fans that decided they had a story to tell and they wanted to they wanted to do this this comic book. And again, Warp Graphics is their company, Richard and Wendy Peeney, or it's Wendy is the W and is the A, Richard is the R and then Peeney is the P in Warp Graphics. I think that's pretty cool. So again, I'm going to ask the question, what did y'all think? You know that you can read this for free online. The Peenies have made this entire first original quest, the first 20 issues. And I think even more beyond that, they are available to read for free online at elfquest.com. The version I'm reading is a, a collection that was put out through Dark Horse, who I think still own the, the license to the property. They don't own the property, but they own the license to publish the property. And they put out a number of very large collections um, that are all in the original black and white. Because when this book was started in the 70s and 78, throughout the 80s, it was published in black and white. The versions you can read online, though, at elfquest.com for free have all been colored and very done very well, I, I might say. So um, if you're not reading it and any of these freaking episodes make you kind of go, uh, maybe I should be reading Elf Quest. Heck, Stephen just said that if if I wanted to be a well-rounded comic book reader, that this is a book I need to have in my library. And Stephen's a pretty smart guy. He knows what he's talking about. So maybe I should actually, instead of just listening to the episodes, I should read them as well and become as cool as Stephen is. Then you can do that for free over at elfquest.com. This was issue number 13. So yeah, you've got 13 issues if you want to catch up before we get to issue number 14 in the next month. Uh, but that shouldn't be too hard. I really urge you to go out and read this book if you haven't read it before. Uh, uh, but if you're reading along with me, um, just tell me what you think. Send me an email, just another fanboy at gmail.com. I would love to read your thoughts out on the next ElfQuest episode. Wouldn't, doesn't, doesn't that sound like fun? Me reading your thoughts? I think it sounds like fun. Anyway, I want to thank you all for spending this time with me today. 
I've already gone over the email address, just another fanboy.com. Tell me what you thought. Send it to me. I'll read it out, all that stuff. I always, I also encourage you. I always, did you hear that? I always, good Lord. I also encourage you to subscribe to the show, leave us a five star review, and share the episode with a friend. If you listen to this show through Apple Podcasts, they have an option for you to go and rate the show one through five, five being the best, one being the worst. And the more ratings I get, the higher up in the algorithm, the more people discover this show. So please, please, please stop what you're doing if you're listening to this through I, uh, Apple Podcasts and get in there and rate the show. It's right there on the, the, the freaking page for Just Another Fanboy. And hey, if you never want to miss an episode, here's what you can do. Subscribe to the newsletter at justanotherfanboy.substack.com. Now, I'm going to stop and pause for a minute. You know, don't go putting your freaking device down and grabbing a pencil and paper and all that junk. These links will be in the show notes. All right. Every link I'm giving you will be in the show notes. So you can just tap on it. And boom, you're there. But just another fanboy.substack.com is a free newsletter. And once you sign up, Every episode that comes out from that point will be sent directly to your inbox. So you'll never miss one. The theme song for this episode was written and performed by Derek Nybarger of Atomic Zombie Records. Find more of his music at atomiczombierecords.bandcamp.com. And hey, come and join us over at the Patreon. For as little as a dollar a month, you'll not only get the complete warm and fuzzies knowing that you're helping me support my family, but you're also going to get immediate access to the My Other Podcast podcast. It's not just another fanboy. No, it's My Other Podcast, and it releases every Friday and with rare exception is only available to my patrons. You can join now at patreon.com slash Stephen R. Orr. And don't forget your assignment for the week. Join us on the Just Another Fanboy message boards at forum.justanotherfanboy.com. And again, all links will be in the show notes. And hey, with that out of the way, join me back here on Thursday for another JAF Classic episode. This week, I'm going back to November 1st of 2006, where Norman and I share a hug. After that, make sure you come back next Tuesday, where I may or may not be going through the solicitations for May of 2022. That might be a lot of fun, or it could just be a giant slog. Tune in and see. Until then... My name is Steven, and I'm just another fanboy. Be nice to each other. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Daddy. Good job.